You're welcome back. We're very glad to know that you're still there and watching uh, Breakfast on uh, Plus TV Africa. Right now, we're looking at the economic future of Nigeria under a new presidency. Yesterday was the swearing in of Bola Ahmed Tinubu Dashiwaju. <laughs> That's how uh, his popular name is. He has taken the reins of leadership of Nigeria. And how will the economy fare uh, in his, with him at the helm of affairs? We're glad to have uh, joining us here uh, Mr. Obuna Okuku, an economist. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Okuku. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Okay. Uh, well, you've heard all the promises that were done by the president yesterday after he was sworn in, and most of the things that he talked about will have to d deal with economy, because everything is related to the economy, whether it is employment or uh, 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 moving from uh, consumption to production. Uh, those were not the exact words, because uh, someone else used those ones. But uh, in small words, he said things like that. So. Um, the promises that he made, the GDP growing to 6% and all that, uh, from your assessment, let's take a general picture. How do you think those things he talked about were going to be realizable? Okay, let me start by saying um, the, the reality is, yes, the growth of any economy is premised on actions or deliverables, you know, take the steps you're going to take as, as the leadership of a nation. Now, I, was, I also um, heard, I, I listened to the speech, it was very careful to say, yes, I'm not going to give you details. Later on, my team will come up because I was, I was very interested in the economic plan of the new administration. But um, nevertheless, you know, um, these things are realizable, but they are not things that can happen overnight. You know, these are things, so by the time we see the details from the team, then we'll now know, okay, this is the direction, this is the direction. But he mentioned things like um, being able to have a single window where everybody will pay taxes for it when it comes to investors. You know, he mentioned things like, uh, you know, creating jobs and, uh, you know, in, when it comes to the, 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 in, in the area of technology. And then um, he, he talked about um, uh, um, reducing, you know, uh, increasing our GDP. All, all those things are not things that you can um, actualize overnight. But um, looking at it, but these things are realizable. You know, it depends on first things first, being able to have the right manpower, distill the manpower that you're going to use, putting round pegs and round holes. You know, his recruitment system will first of all tell me if he has, if he means what he's saying. Because, I mean, anybody that, you know, that's sticking over this economy today is going to have to do a lot of work because a lot has gone Round, you know, gone wrong. A lot, a lot of things needs to be done, both from the fiscal end and also from the monetary end. You know, um, we, 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 for us to, you know, begin to have the the dollar, you know, to reduce the dollarization of our economy. First things first, you have to, you know, reduce the dependence on foreign foreign goods and services, and those things we have to be able to domesticate some of our production, which means that you must have a very robust raw material supply strategy. I always say it's, it's beyond the finished goods. Even the industries that are here are still depending on raw materials that come from outside Nigeria to be able to, you know, you know, support their, you know, their, their factories or their industries. So that's, that also speaks to the fact that yes, the machineries are, you know, constant, but those raw materials are things that you must do every now and then. So it means that you're still spending a whole lot of money for an exchange, bringing in goods from outside Nigeria. So, I mean, these are the things. And then for you to be able to make that happen, you know, when you, when you want to have the dynamic, uh, uh, dynamic um, raw material, you know, uh, supply strategy, that means your infrastructure has to be good because there are raw materials that as soon as you move them from the farm gate, they should be able to get, to, uh, you know, appear at the factory as fast as possible, which also speaks to the fact that, just like he said, we need to deal with multiple taxations. Mm -hmm. Trucks leave farm gate before they get to the factory uh, uh, gate. You know, there's a whole lot that happens. Local government will hold you. States will hold you. People that ask for tickets. A lot of things happen. And those things actually cause delay. Because everything that has to do with production, has to, there has to be consistency. So pretty much, I mean, there's so much that has to be done. You know, you need to, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
oil the engine room of your bureaucrat the bureaucratic system, which is the civil service, because these are the people who carry who carry who push policies from you know from the team from desk to desk. So you need to have you know it's it's all it boils down to the right leadership and then being able to you know have the right support for the private sector because if you want the private sector to function very well efficiency must be your watchword and for efficiency to work you need to have the right people plug in the right positions so that things and then giving they must be given targets because when you give them targets and then give them free hand to work they will be able to do the right thing and then give you the actual result that you need okay let's sorry let's go into specifics uh he kick-started his administration by removing fuel subsidy we won't say that the previous administration removed it no the previous administration had fuel subsidy to the end, and he also promised uh, that he was going to review the monetary policy and also look at the Naira redesign and all those things that are uh, tied to uh, what has been done. So, which means anything that was not agreeable to his administration, he is bound to review. So, if he let the fuel subsidy stay, that means he is the one who removed it. So, that is out of the way. So now, he has started this administration with removal of fuel subsidy. Make, us, make, a, make it make sense to us um, how this will be a very big advantage to Nigerians, at least in the short run. Because even though a lot of people were applauding the removal of fuel subsidy, not everybody seems to understand the implications of removing this fuel subsidy and what it will do to the average Nigerian. Are you a supporter of this removal, the way it was removed, and why? Anyway, let me let me let me just say, um, I see what you present Ahmed uh, Bola Ahmed did not remove fuel subsidy. What he did was to say, I have seen that it's clear, it's clear the budgetary provision for the year 2023 does not have subsidy in it. Money to pay subsidy was not there. So what he is just trying to say, because everybody knows that this is not sustainable. So if he's not in the budget, so where is he going to get money from? So all these extra funds, because we're looking for money, so borrowing money to support the, the uh, NNPC to pay subsidy, I mean, it's not going to work anymore. It's not sustainable. It has never been sustainable. So making sense out of it will mean we need to find other ways. And I thank God the fact that the Dangote refinery have started working, you know, helps a whole lot, you know, for the nation to, you know, you know, go from this importation of uh, finished petroleum uh, products. And that will, you know, that, that's, that's a, a good sign for us. I mean, that's a, you know, I'll call it that the act of God happened there. But be that as you may. Whether you like it or not, because I mean, where are you going to get the funds from? Are you going to continue to borrow and then begin to increase the debt burden on the nation because servicing this debt is actually a burden? So in reality, what the president said is it is not available. There's no funds available. So we can't you know, continue to pay subsidy. So we can't borrow to pay subsidy. So in reality, everybody, we need to build up. It is something that need, that it was just... It's it, 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 something that was going to happen, in, uh, and nobody, no sane person, wants to continue to pay subsidy, taking almost eighty percent, eighty percent of your income to import petroleum product to who? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you giving the money to? Who is going to use the money? Um, I mean, who is going to use the fuel? So we need to do a complete diagnostic, diagnostic, you know, review of. How how many vehicles do we have in this country? How many uh, uh, mm. how, how much consumption do we do we really consume? So until we have details, because these things are not so difficult, they are not uh, rocket science. Because I mean, it's been dealt with a lot of corruption and all of that. So we need to have an audit carried out to even understand what the NMPC has been doing over the years with these subsidy funds. So. It has to go, and um, Nigerians, we need to brace up because, I mean, the reality is here. But like I said, the cushion will be the Dangote refinery working and then giving us enough petroleum product. And then again, it will also encourage a lot of people to invest in that space, in the downstream sector of the economy. Then the other small refineries coming up in different places, Biasa and other, uh, I think, Edo also. So, so these things will help, you know, complement and then support. But in the immediate, it's going to bite a bit for us. 
Um, well, it, w away with the old <laughs> and in with the new, but it's still the same party. And one of the reasons why some Nigerians are not excited about this present administration is because it's coming from a source that they are not uh, comfortable with, they do not trust, a source that had given promises since 2015 up to now, and these promises were not fulfilled. However, um, these are two different persons. Buhari is different from Tinubu. Buhari, totally different in career from Tinubu. Tinubu being uh, an economist, and then he has uh, a vice president who had his time in the banking sector. Do you have any expectations, or are your expectations raised in this team that we have coming in today? If they are, uh, what are your expectations from this new team coming from the, the uh, you know, the background that they are coming from? Henry, um, I, I was having a conversation with some people yesterday. I said, if there's anybody that has worked to become the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, it's President Bola Ahmed Tinibu. Nobody for over 20 years, this man sat down, plotted, designed a program, implemented the program, and actualized it. Anybody that must fail as a president is not Bola Ahmed Tinibu. He does not have the, the he doesn't have opportunity to fail. He has no excuse to fail. So the same way he plotted to become president is the same way I believe he's going to plot to bring us out of this dark hole that the country has been in. It might not be like you said, um, a lot of people don't trust the system and all of that, but the reality is that Bola Amatinibu is now sworn in as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So be that as it may, we must all come together and work towards realizing a better Nigeria. Like I said, the recruitment system will show, my people will say, the first step you take will show whether you're a good dancer or not as soon as the music starts playing. As soon as he begins to announce his cabinet, announce his team, everybody, at that point, I will now tell you, yes, I am sure. But like I said earlier, whether we trust the system or trust, there are two different personalities here. Uh, 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 President Buhari and President uh, uh, Amatini, they're two different people. Because everything has always fallen on the box tops at the table of the president. Leadership is everything. Like I said, if you work so hard to become, not contesting so hard to become, they're two different things. If you work so hard and the, at the first shot, he got it. That means he planned it well and then he's here now, so he needs to deliver. I have, uh, we will not make excuses for him. I will not wait for him to give us excuses at the end of his study. Okay, um, I was going to uh, say something while you were talking, uh, because if we keep talking about the individuals and divorcing the individual from the system and from what is available in Nigeria to the leaders to perform, uh, we may be making a mistake. Bola Ahmed Tinubu has prepared himself for over 20 years to be the president. The Buhari that just left was actually a head of state before now. He was uh, in charge of petroleum at some point when he was not the president or the head of state. And then he, he contested three times to become president. So that gives him like 12 years of preparation before he became a president and worked for eight years. And people still see him as someone who failed. May, it depends on where you stand anyway, but the bulk of Nigerians think that he failed. So preparation is one thing, but the instruments, the tools available to you is another thing. And so we're asking, um, what are the things available to Bola Ahmed Tunubu, the smart Bola Ahmed Tunubu, who has become the president, to succeed in Nigeria? Because Nigeria is different from, uh, from Lagos. So what are these tools available to him? To succeed. He has talked about industrialization, he has talked about creation of jobs and all that. He didn't tell us how he's going to create the jobs, whether everybody will become a policeman now or an army man or something, I don't know. But what are these tools, I keep asking, that are available to him to excel? Now the key thing is um, being, being, being able to, he, he had said something earlier, he said um, it depends on who is saying that Buhari failed. I don't believe that that Buhari failed. Buhari just did his best. But 
in as much as I, I would say he did his best, but his best was not good enough because that is not failure in itself. It's because he believed in certain people, he believed in certain strategies, and those strategies did not work, did not give us as much. Because, I mean, there's so much going on. A lot of things happened under his administration. Don't forget there was COVID, there was recession, a lot of things happened. So, I mean, I'm not trying to make excuses for President Muhammad Buhari, but what I'm just trying to say in essence is the tools available. And then you also you also said, Buhari, I, I really clear in my statement, I said, not contesting three times. That does not mean preparation. Okay? Now, I'm saying that a man sat down in Lagos State, as, or even before he became the governor of Lagos State, if you watched his antecedents, he has always been around from Nadeko, followed MKO, followed, you know, you will see him at every point in time when you're discussing leadership in this nation, you will see him around somewhere in the corridor. So, be that as it may. And he has progressed till he got here. So what are the tools available to him? One thing nobody will take away from him is the fact that if you turn around, you see that he has raised people. He has people in different places, including the vice president that just left. He, he, I mean, these are people who have worked under him. These are people who was able to do his talent hunt and then pull them close to himself. So in reality, a man who has capacity to identify talent and pull them to himself should tell you that the person he has a direction, he knows what he's looking for. So the realization will not be, is what his, we call it, uh, in leadership we call that um, his value proposition when it comes to leadership. It, it, the value proposition is able to deliver what we need as a nation. That's what I said, until he begins to make the announcement, then Nigerians will know whether his, value, his, his public value proposition will be in reality able to emancipate Nigeria from where we are. And don't forget, there is also an issue of trust. The young people, which he also said, my cabinet will future a lot of young people and women. Mm -hmm. So that means he already knows what he wants to actualize. Not in promises. Yes, he has made the promises. So in a few days to come, these things will begin to unfold. Like I said, as soon as he may, begins to mention his team, everybody will know, is this man able to deliver up or not? Yes. Um, do you see a situation where, as part of his strategies, he may need to tinker with the Constitution to be able to achieve the level of success expected of a man of his pedigree? Some have said that Nigeria, as it is, cannot make progress, no matter who comes on board. I have never believed in that. All I have always said is, until you are able to drive a particular gear, to its maximum. Changing gear might not be as, as useful. What do I mean by that? Yes, there are lacunas, there are issues with the constitution. I mean, some of them have been taken care of. Some of the issues around uh, the power sector, now states can actually generate their power and then, you know, push out the same power, transmit the power to its people and generate its funds. But in reality, one of the biggest problems I've always seen that we have is the subnationals not being at par or not working together with those at the, at, the, at the federal level. Now, he also mentioned that in the speech. He said, we're going to work with the subnationals to be able to actualize some of our dreams. So being a Democrat, being someone who knows how to negotiate, because he would have gotten to where he is today if he didn't know how to negotiate. So being someone who knows how to negotiate power, he should be able to negotiate strategies that will actually help you know, emancipate the economy. So what am I trying to say here? If that confluence must happen, if the reality, it was, especially when, when we, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, my field in investment promotion, there's something we say, uh, no, no project is domiciled in the air. They're all domiciled in states. So for that to happen, you must have a good relationship with the state governors. You must have a good relationship with those at the local level. Because if they are not, if the efficiency you're trying to, you know, make happen at the federal level is not domiciled at the state or does not, you know, happen at the state, you have just wasted your energy. So he understands this thing. That's why even in his statement, he said foreign investors, investors, both foreign and local, are going to have, you know, we are going to look into your issue. How are we going to be able to handhold investors to do business here? Because we're talking about a dollar. 
how do we get dollar? We can only earn dollar. We can't print dollar. So the export market has to, we have to have a boost in the export market. We need to produce more. If, that's, if that has to happen, we have to, you know, produce more. And then standardization has to happen. So all that whole gridlock at Apapa or our wharf has to be taken care of immediately. So there will be free flow of goods and services out in and out of Nigeria. So these are the things I believe in the in a few weeks coming, we'll be able to see those who are going to man those organizations or man those um, agencies of government to help you know some of these things, and then that matchmaking, like I said, will happen between the federal and the and the states. Become a hydrum headed monster in this country, uh, which would deter, which would this become like a clog in the wheel of the progress of any government. And he has said that he's going to um, strengthen the anti-corruption agencies to discourage corruption. Do you see him achieving that if he does not bring to justice those who have been seen and known to have been corrupt in this outgoing government? I, I won't even bore you by making a list of some of them that we know so obviously. But do you see him having the political will, seeing that they are people of his party, to bring them to book? And if he doesn't bring them to book because they are people of his party, what sort of deterrent measures would he be able to establish? And then how can he fight corruption if he's not seen to be fighting corruption? Okay, so let's 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 look at you know your colleague said something about yes we should depart from discussing uh, uh, individuals and discuss system. Now, if he's able to strengthen the anti-corruption agencies, will simply mean allowing the system to work. Now I don't see um, I don't see any president who you call on the phone and say ah, your friend was held by the anti corruption agency please call them to come out no like I said the recruitment if the anti corruption campaign or the strategy must work we must allow the system to work so the justice system which the reforms that happened in Lagos State while it was in Lagos State. If those, I mean, you can see the justice system in Lagos State is what even the federal government that, you know, tried to adopt. So those things are the kind of systems we're talking about. If the leadership is allowed to do its work, and for him to say, I will strengthen, that means he's going to, so anybody that is close to him should know that if you cannot do the time, don't touch the crime. So the ones that have touched the crime, you either go and do a plea bargain, because there are lots of opportunities for you to do a plea bargain, and return some of the stolen wealth, and then go about your normal life, if you refuse, this, the things will definitely catch up with you. Don't forget, one of the pioneer head, the pioneer head of the anti-corruption crusade in Nigeria, Malam Nuhuribado, is very close to um, well, uh, 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 President Bola Ahmed So that will also speak volumes because, I mean, he understands the issues and understands the problems around the, 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 the anti-corruption campaign and um, the drive in Nigeria and knowing that that all will also detail a lot of investors because you can't be calling investors and then the corruption will still be the order of the day in Nigeria. So it's not about chasing those who just left the government. But if the anti-corruption agencies you know, do their job and they're giving targets to make sure that they do their job, I mean, the net will catch up on anybody who decides who, who has done something wrong or the other and then the justice system will take, will, will take prevalence as well as the constitution. Okay, let's look at the taxation. He said something about unifying the taxation uh, process and all that. Um, uh, when he said this, a lot of us did not understand. When you talk tax that needs to be unified, uh, what, what did he really mean when he said that? Which tax will be put together to make sure that there's a unified uh, process to do, of doing these things and which ones will be out of that net that uh, other people can be collecting. Because you go to the marketplace, you go to everywhere, they're collecting taxes and multiple taxes. Uh, so what did he really mean and how will he achieve this? Now, taxation, I mean, uh, everybody will tell you, well, for you people in Lagos, everybody says in Lagos, everybody pays tax in Lagos. Everything, you pay tax in Lagos. Whatever they were able to achieve in Lagos was possible because there was a big diagnosis um, the analysis, analysis that was carried out in Lagos State. Because, I mean, Nigeria is still, is still I mean, we're still as low as six, uh, uh, our, our tax to GDP is still very low, less than 10%. What well, that simply means that a lot of people are not in the tax net. Now, that also negates the fact that 
on some scrupulous element somewhere somehow still find a way to you know tax you know tax a lot of people who are doing their own little business i mentioned in my in my in my in my beginning shots that for you to move goods okay i have my own personal experience i was moving cassava stems from delta state to aquibum state okay now for you to move the truck itself must have almost 32 stickers from different states in Nigeria, different local governments in Nigeria, any route they pass, those are multiple tax stations. Mm. So who are these people? Radio tax, tire tax, different things, all kinds of tax, produce tax. Who are all these people collecting these monies? So unifying our tax system will simply mean having be, be, be able to you know, find out what investors face. What are their problems? Are you having issues because our aftercare, our aftercare services as a nation has been a bit uh, has been a bit slow because some of the agencies of government that are supposed to be doing this are not doing it, and then there's this you know rivalry between different agencies of government, especially asking for this. So there has to be a single you know tax system. Now it brings more people into the tax net and then make streamline taxes. So there are a lot of taxes happening at, at the local level that a lot of people don't, don't look at. So it's beyond the company the, the, the company income tax. No, those ones are those they are statutory, they're understandable. We know where the money is going to. But down there a lot is going on. You will be shocked at what happens everywhere. There are people who pay different kinds of taxes at the local level. So until we x-ray. And these things are things that investors have been complaining about. So if we extreme, begin to distill, and then we'll find a way to now harmonize. So if the tax we are receiving is going to the local government, then and then, there and then, with, with, uh, with, with, with technology in place, it will go directly to the local government account. But it's not having out on the road. People wearing some yellow uniform with reflective jackets, stopping you on the highway, collecting one thing or the other, asking you from one sticker or the other. It's really ridiculous. You don't know how bad this thing is until you have experienced it. Some of the goods I was talk talking to you about, the cassava stands, and these are things that don't stay so long. They will hold you there if you don't pay. These are youths. There are, there are, people, there are places where if you go now, especially in the Niger Delta region, you, you must pay what they call produce before you can move anything out of the farm gate. And these are things that we need to be able to streamline. Provide leadership and make sure those things don't happen. Because these things are the things that you should pick and make sure that businesses don't work in this country. Yes, Ikuku, and uh, some of the things uh, some of us are expecting to see from this presidency is uh, a reduction in wastages and leakages. Um, we've been hearing in the past of budgets for of millions and billions for feeding for the first families and you know the cost of governance being too high in this climb you know when compared to what happens in other climbs and we are talking about how the masses are suffering high rate of inflation and then you're hearing of presidents and vice presidents being given hardship allowances and all of that meanwhile the masses that are suffering they do not have any form of allowance for the hardship that they are going through. So we are looking at the reduction of, and you me, know, the cost okay, of go governance ahead, go ahead. and blocking all the sources of leakages of wastages. You know, in reality, yes, um, you know, I said earlier that efficiency in the system, being able to be efficient, you know, also mean some of those leakages have to be blocked, you know, and blocking those leakages um, will be very useful. Now, um, if you listen to the president's speech, he said something that was very germane that nobody should overlook. He said, we're going to lead, you know, with compassion in our hearts. So that means that um, when, you, when you are compassionate as a leader, you, the, the things that people face would actually touch you. And like you said, I'm not, he has not given details on how these things will happen. But if you marry that, with what his wife said in the in the service that was held a few days ago, you know, for the inauguration. Mm -hmm. She said, I and my family, we are comfortable. We are not coming to use Nigeria's money to, to feed ourselves. Okay? Mm -hmm. We're already comfortable. We're just coming to work. So that means if they already have, so if, they, if they, they, they're not interested in those things, 
that's from what she said. But now let me also say some of the times, you know, when some of this, um, you know, in the, in the public space, people are talking about how much money that is being spent at the at the at the Aso Villa and all of that. And uh, I people always forget that these people have guests every day. They have people coming from all over the world. They have to be entertained, and you can't just. Say, ah, we are hungry. Okay, our country is poor. We will not tell you. We will not tell you. Okoko, Mrs. Michelle Obama, yeah. well, we just have to make references sometimes. It's, uh, it's, in, yeah. it's unavoidable. It's inevitable to sometimes uh, make references to things that are working when comparing with things that are not working. I do remember in an interview, Mrs. Michelle Obama did say that for every guest they entertained, it came from their pocket. Mm -hmm. So why do, why should our own uh, president in an economy that is struggling, as Nigeria is struggling, be spending uh, taxpayers' money entertaining their innumerable number of guests? Okay, so some of these things, maybe um, uh, Michelle Obama, I don't know if she was specific about the guest. If the guest, is, if they are state guests, I don't think that Michelle Obama and, his, and her husband will take care of state guests from her their pockets, not possible, because the system provides, if the Queen of England is coming to, oh sorry, the King of England is visiting America today, are you trying to tell me that uh, the President will use his money to, to, to take care of them? No, there are state apparatus that must take care of those ban the banquet that will happen. It is not possible. So let's, um, I understand making references to some of these issues, but the reality is I'm not talking about personal friends coming to visit the president. No, I'm talking about some of these state visits, the president of Cameroon coming to come and do congratulatory, you know, visit to the, 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 the Chinese government trying to come and forge, you know, good alliances with, with Nigeria, the European Union visiting, and then you are telling me that Bola President Bola Ametin will take money from his own. No, they are still apart of these are things. That's why the banquet hall is there at the villa because they, are, they have a budget to provide. If they know the level of person that is coming, that will speak to them the kind the level of preparation that must be done. So some of these things, brigade of guard, the kind of uh, display that will be done, all these money that's still inside. So some of these things, until you're able to go into it and understand how it works, so uh, you know people will be misinformed about how this money. So how much how much food can the president and his family eat in a day? In reality, can, can they eat more than three square meals? That's why Are they going to be eating Shada. gold? That's why they can't be eating Shada. gold. They still eat the same rice and all of that. that yeah, that, that's, why that's why Nigerians shudder. That's why Nigerians shudder when they see the billions being budgeted for such things. Yes, so that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to, you know, extract the whole atmosphere. Everybody will understand that this money is not just going to President Bola Metinigo and Shei and everybody to eat. It. No, it's not. That's not okay. how it works. I mean, okay, Obona. Obona, this is this is the issue, Obona. When she asked the question, she said cost of governance. That was the, the board of contention, cost of governance. The mm. president mm. didn't say anything about cutting the cost of governance. For instance, uh, whether their family is comfortable or not, every year in the budget, there will still be uh, a budget for utensils in the government house. What happened to the one of previous year? We do not know. Uh, every year, there will be budgeting money, a lot of money that you'll be asking yourself, like you just said, how many square meals does the president eat and how many eats are in the presidential villa? And if you take the, the instance of El Zagzaki, for instance, the money that the federal government said they were voting to feed someone in prison, like a millionaire or so, mm -hmm. per day, and then they and told us, aids? yes, the, the vice president yes. alone would have. They, they told us also aids. that prisoners take 14,000 uh, naira a day for feeding. And, you know, if you've ever visited the prisons, you'll know what it is. And then how many aids does a president need? How many aids does the aid of the president need? Mm. You know, all these things. He said nothing about cutting the cost of governance. And people have always been complaining. The cost of governance in Nigeria is humongous. And if we are struggling as a nation, something definite should be done about it. And Nigerians expected him to say something about, you know, reviewing some of these things that are worrisome to Nigerians. So do you think he will have the political will to cut the cost of governance, to, cost, to cut how much maybe the senators are paid, maybe the people in the presidency are paid, maybe the political big weeks are paid, uh, to make money, to free up some money for the development of infrastructure paying of debts and making life bearable for the people of, the, of Nigeria.
That's what we're asking. Does he have that political will okay. to cut the cost of, cost of governance? Now, I, I try to, you know, um, sometimes I like to put faces to discussions, you know, because, um, yes, I understand, I mean, I, I knew where your colleague was going to when she asked the question that it was about, you know, cutting costs, you know, cutting the cost of um, governance okay. that is very high. Now, in reality, um, whether we like it or not, those are the things that we must do. Um, if you remember the Oronsaye report, which um, had, it was supposed to become a white paper and then the implementation and all that. Now, um, it's beyond, uh, uh, you know, um, how much senators are paid, how much this person is paid. Some of those funds, uh, you know, um, some of these funds, yes, there are statutory institutions that have the, the powers to, you know, like the, the wages and the commission, with some commissions on, on wages, you know, those are the things that are supposed to be their job. But be that as it may, um, you can't say um, because uh, monies, that, those are not the areas, if you ask me. I, I, I will not pay attention to salaries, to, you know, political appointees so much as, as paying attention to the, the, the civil service the window of monies disappearing. Mm. Monies, income that is supposed to go into the government coffers, entering people's pockets. Mm. I will pay more attention to those. Because how much is it? Let's yeah, even look at the salaries of everybody that is a political, a political appointee. How much is it? Compared to the amount of money we are looking at. So but for me, I understand that I, you see, I, I, the key word is efficiency in the system. When you have an efficient system, it will be able to give you where your issues are, okay? You understand, okay, how much do I need to expend on A, B, C, D? Mm. And then when you even have, you know, a, 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 let's say for insurance, if you have the good, uh, 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 the good uh, health insurance system okay. that is working, some of those monies that you spend on, uh, you know, on, 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 on health issues around those who work for you, you know, those things are already taken care of because, I mean, as such, okay. pay your premium, those things are taken okay, care of. Okay, Chris. Like I said, it's, it's, we have to do a detailed work so yeah. that you could say, okay, these are the things that have to be done. And, thank you. Know, you. Thank you. Um, I, I wish we had more time, but we've run out of time. And would like to thank you so much for coming on the program uh, Chris, why am I calling you Chris? Obonna, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the program. And, and, let, also, and, let, me, and let me also try to correct the name in the, in the, I'm, a, I'm an economic development expert, not an economist. I'm an economic development expert, yes. You, you are so a, a economic development Expert, yeah. Expert, okay. okay. Oh, oh, good. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, have spoken as such. Mm, yeah. have really spoken as such. Thank you for your Thank time. you so much. Uh, well, okay, that was uh, Obonna Ukuku, um, economic development expert, you exactly. know, talking to us <laughs> there. And uh, it is the home stretch mm -hmm. of the breakfast this morning. But before we go, we uh, have the quote of the day. For yes, you. Uh, it tells us that the past government was not necessarily useless or the new government will not be useless just because it's not what we want it to be. And the quote is from uh, Thomas Edison. He said in his words, just because something doesn't do what you planned it to do doesn't mean it is useless. So <laughs> uh, remember that always. And uh, just before we sign off and say bye-bye, so remember, a lot of people are panic buying. Some filling stations may be selling even at 600 uh, naira, as we have seen. But we've also heard from Mele Kiari that there is enough fuel and Nigerians should stop panic buying. So the hardship should not start today, maybe sometime in the future, because there is enough fuel for Nigerians. Until we meet again tomorrow, my name is Nyambu. And I am Maureen. Do enjoy the rest of your day and do keep a date with us tomorrow.